Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we're having the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. This week, we have our patron Kelvin on for some high power EDH action. So let's see what everyone brought to the table. First up is Matt on Mirko, Obsessive Theorist. This Demir deck is all about surveilling as a way to pump up Mirko, fill up the yard, and to reanimate passive, impactful creatures of Mirko. Next is Ethan on Velomachus Lorehold. This Boros deck has a straightforward game plan. Ramp to cast Velomachus, swing, cast spells, rinse and repeat. Extra combat's thrown in for extra fun. Our third player today is Jason on Ural the Miststalker. This is a Naya Auras deck, hoping to enchant Ural with as many auras as possible for big punchies. Editor's side note, this deck was submitted by our awesome patron, Pancake. Thank you. Last is Kelvin on Lind, Cheerful Tormentor. This is a Grixis deck focused around curses, hoping to slow down the game and wear his opponents down with all of his curses. We're about to hop right into the game, but before that, go and give us a like, subscribe, and read the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We have links to our social media, public Discord server, deck lists, and our Patreon in the description. We're part with Dragon Shield. Check out our affiliate link in the description if you're looking to pick up any sleeves, deck boxes, or playmats. Use code SMOOTH5 at checkout for 5% off your order. We are also partnered with Inks Gaming. Our affiliate link is also in the description if you're looking to make any custom playmats. Now, on to the gameplay. It would appear that Ethan has won the die roll. He'll play Command Tower into Wayfarer's Bobble and pass to Jason. Jason will play a Spire Garden as land for turn and then pass the turn to Kelvin, who will shock in a Blood Crypt and then cast Blood Chief's Ascension. The turn is then passed to Matt and he'll play a Strip Mine and pass to Ethan. Who plays a Plains, and he'll just crack the Wayfarer's Bobble for a tapped Mountain, and then pass the turn to Jason while he searches. Jason plays his Besaidua's land for turn, then he'll tap for two, and cast Nature's Lore. This finds him Lush Portico to the battlefield tapped, and he'll surveil Danitha to the graveyard. Then he'll pass to Kelvin. Kelvin starts off with a Polluted Delta, and it's immediately cracked for an untapped Watery Grave. Then he'll tap for one and cast his Soul Ring, and then for three, and cast Trenosphere. The turn is in pass to Matt, and while well, his turn two play got a little interrupted, so he'll just play a tapped Demir Aqueduct and bounce his strip mine, then pass to Ethan, and he discards Vizier of Many Faces and Cleanup. Ethan will start his turn off with a basic mountain, then he'll tap for three and cast Basalt Monolith, and then he'll just pass the turn. Jason starts off with the City of Brass as land for turn, then he'll tap for two and three visits. Scratch that, he'll tap for three, my bad. This will find him a tap Jetmir's Garden, and he passes while he's searching. Now on Kelvin's turn, he'll start off by tapping for three to cast Curse of Vengeance on himself. The turn is then passed to Matt, and he'll start his turn off with a basic swamp, and then he'll tap for three and cast Mirko, Obsessive Theorist. And then the turn is passed to Ethan, and he's going to do what he came here to do. He's going to tap for seven and cast his commander, Velomachus Lorehold. And then Ethan will move to combat, and for his Trinagressions, Kelvin is hit for five commander damage. And Ethan does get an attack trigger, but because of the turn of sphere, he can't cast anything. So he'll just pass the turn after playing a tapped Sacred Foundry. The turn is then passed to Jason, and he'll just tap for five and cast Ural the Mist Stalker, and then pass to Kelvin. Kelvin starts off with unfortunately missing another land drop, but he will tap for three and cast Professional Facebreaker, and then pass to Matt. Matt starts off with his Strip Mine again, then he'll tap for three and cast Discovery, which has him surveil two and then draw a card. And the surveil two puts Jingataxis Progress Tyrant and Massacre Worm into the graveyard. Also, Mirko gets a 1-1 counter. Matt will then move to combat, and he's Jason for two Vigilance in the air. Matt then moves to end step, and Mirko will trigger, returning Vizier of Many Faces, which copies Velomachus Lorehold, and then Kelvin's Blood Chief Ascension will get a counter. We'll then move to Ethan's turn, and he'll move to combat and swing for five Commander at Kelvin again. Attack trigger, and he'll look at the top seven cards of his library, and there's nothing in there he actually wants to cast, so he'll just shuffle those seven cards and put them on the bottom of his library, and then Kelvin takes five more commander. Post combat, Ethan will tap for three and cast a Boros Signet, then he'll tap for another three and cast Soul Ring. Then he'll pass to Jason, who will immediately cast Unquestioned Authority on Ural. When it ETBs, he'll draw a card, and now Ural has pro creatures. Wow, that's scary. Jason will then move to combat and gently places seven commander damage on Matt. Then he'll just pass the turn to Kelvin, and his Blood Chief's Ascension will trigger on instep. Then on his turn, he starts off with a Cephalid Colosseum as land for turn. Then he moves to combat and hits Ethan for two with Amateur Facebreaker. Then post combat, he'll cast his commander, Lind, and he takes a damage from his Colosseum. Kelvin will then move to instep, and his Blood Chief's Ascension is now online. And then we move to Matt's turn. He'll start off with the Tocasius Dig Site as land for turn. Then he'll move to combat and he'll swing his Velomachus at Jason. Attack trigger, and he'll look at the top seven cards of his library. And then thanks to Trinisphere, he'll pay three mana for a frantic search. And then since he used his Demir Aqueduct, he'll float a colorless so he untaps three lands. And after his draws, he'll discard Twilight Prophet and the Roaming Throne. 
After all this resolves, he'll lose a total of 6 life and Kelvin will gain 6 to Blood Chief's Ascension. Jason will then take his 5 Velomachus damage, and the map moves to his second main, where he'll pay 2 mana and suspend Watcher of Hours. It gets 6 time counters. Then he'll tap for 3 and cast Mind Stone, and then pass the turn to Ethan. And you better believe Ethan just moves to combat again and swings for 5 commander at Kelvin. Attack trigger, he'll look at the top 7 of his library, and he'll choose Chaos Warp, and he'll pay 3 mana to cast it and Chaos Warp away Trinisphere. After a shuffle and a cut, Kelvin will reveal Morphic Pools, which goes to the battlefield. And then Ethan loses 2 and Kelvin gains 2 to Blood Chief's Ascension. And then 5 more command damage goes through. Post combat, Ethan will cast a Smuggler's Share, and then a Thought Vessel, and then he'll pass to Jason. Jason will just play into Ganjo's land for a turn, then slam Rishkar's expertise. Ooh boy, that's quite the draw 7. Good news for Ethan though, he draws a card on instep. And Jason's free 5 CMC card is a Winds of Wrath. This destroys all non-enchanted creatures. Psych! Kelvin has fierce guardianship. That boy is countered. Jason will then move to combat, and he hits Matt for another 7 commander damage, and then he'll pass the turn and go to his cleanup. Uh, I'm going to discard a Temple Garden, a Commercial District, a Arcane Signet, Messenger Speed, and a Flicker Form. That's 5 cards discarded, so Jason will lose a total of 10, and Kelvin gains 10. We'll then move to Kelvin's turn, and on upkeep, Lind will move his curse over to Ethan, and he'll draw 2 cards. Kelvin will then move to combat, and hit Ethan for 2 more with Professional Facebreaker, and get another treasure token. Then, post-combat, Kelvin will tap for 7 and cast Toxroll. Then he'll pass the turn, and slime counters all around. On Matt's upkeep, his suspended card goes down 1, and he'll surveil 1 and leave it on top. His commander gets a counter. Matt will then play an Urborg as land for turn, then cast Charnel Serenade. He'll surveil 3 and leave all 3 on top, and then return Jinga Taxes to the battlefield. It has a finality counter on it, and then the Serenade will be suspended with 3 counters on it. Blood Chief's Ascension will also trigger, and Mirko also gets another counter. Matt will then move to combat, and he'll swing Velomachus and his commander at Jason for a total of 7. Attack trigger, and it is unfortunately a whiff. So Jason will just take his damage, 3 of which is commander, and then Matt will pass the turn to Ethan. More slime counters are passed around on instep. Now on Ethan's turn, he'll start off with a Talisman of Conviction, which is countered by Jin Gitaxis, which also triggers Blood Chief's Ascension again. Ethan will then move to combat and swing for 3 commander at Kelvin. Attack trigger. He finds a generous gift, which he will point at Jin Gitaxis. So Jin is dead and Matt gets a 3-3, and Blood Chief Ascension triggers. Then Kelvin will take his 3 commander. After this, Ethan will move to his second main phase, where he'll cast Relentless Assault. Untapping all of his creatures, not that he needs to, and he'll have an extra combat after this main phase. Kelvin does decide to respond by sacrificing his treasure to exile the top card of his library, but it's only an opposition agent, so it will resolve. Yet another Blood Chief's Ascension trigger. Ethan will then move to combat and swing for 3 commander, which will be lethal at Kelvin. Another attack trigger. This one is unfortunately a whiff for Ethan, but Kelvin will take his 3 commander and be dead here. So now the Toxtral's gone, slime counters still remain, but they don't get minus one minus one for them anymore. The turn is then passed to Jason, and he'll start off with a Carplishan Forest. Then he'll cast Birthright Boon, and this will tutor an aura to his hand. That aura is Armadillo Cloak. Hope you're happy, Sam. It and Ethereal Armor are both cast onto Ural the Miststalker. Then he'll move to combat and swing for 16 at Matt, which obliterates him, and then Jason will gain 16 life. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan, and on end step, Ethan will pay 3 mana to untap his Basalt Monolith. And the only thing he can really do is hope to kill Jason this turn, so he moves to combat and swings Velomachus at him. Attack trigger. And he finds a Savage Beating. And, since Entwine is an additional cost, Ethan is able to pay 2 mana to get both effects. So Velomachus gets Double Strike until end of turn, and Ethan gets another combat phase. So Jason will take 10 commander damage, and Ethan moves to his second combat. He'll swing, look at the top 7, and reveal World at War. Oops, not that one. This one. Yeah. And it's at this point that Jason decides to take a damage to his City of Brass, to float a white, and path to exile Velomachus Lorehold. But Ethan will pay 1 red to bolt bend it back at Ural. Now I know what you're probably thinking, Ural has hexproof, this doesn't work. Well, Ethan's not gaining control of the spell, he's just changing the targets, and Hexproof only stops your opponents from targeting it. This is Jason's spell, so Ural is exiled, and this will seal the deal. Jason takes an additional 10 commander, putting him up to 20, and then Ethan moves to his third combat, where he finds Angel Fire Ignition to get a little overkill in. So that's the game, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Congratulations to Ethan and Velomachus Lorehold. Well, 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 everybody. What did you think of that game? I personally loved it. 
It was actually really fun to see pretty much everyone die to command damage, and it wasn't just one player's command damage. In all honesty, I always root for the big dragon or dinosaur, so I'm kind of happy with this result, but I would have been happy to see anyone win. Kelvin, thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone you played with said they had an amazing time. All of you viewers, let us know what you guys thought of the game down in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But that's enough from me today. Hope you all have a smooth day.